In this lecture, we're going to talk about computing trigonometric functions of acute angles. From geometry and in trigonometry, we have two special types of triangles that we often use. The first is a 30 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree triangle, and the second is a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. We can use triangle trigonometry to determine trigonometric function values of these special angles. So if you look at the table below, we see the three special types of angles, a 30 degree angle, a 45 degree angle, and a 60 degree angle, which also measure pi over 6 radians, pi over 4 radians, and pi over 3 radians respectively. And you can see the list of all of their trig function values. Now these are the values that would be present on the unit circle if you're using that to help you compute your trigonometric function values. Okay, so for example, if I wanted to find the tangent of 60 degrees, I can look at 60 degrees and go over and see that tangent is square root of 3. If I wanted to find the secant of 30 degrees, I would look at 30 degrees and go over to secant and see that's 2 times the square root of 3 over 3. So this table could come in handy when you're working with your trig, trig, trigonometry. You may want to take a minute and copy this table down into your notes for future reference. It would be easier to look at it while the lecture continues from your notes than to have to scroll back. So let's look at an example. Let's assume that f of theta is equal to sine of theta and g of theta is equal to cosine of theta. First we want to find g of theta over 2 if theta equals 60 degrees. So first, let's consider g of theta over 2. If we plug in 60 degrees for theta, that's going to give us g of 60 degrees over 2. And 60 divided by 2 gives us 30 degrees, so we have g of 30 degrees. So if we plug 30 degrees into the function g, that's going to give us cosine of 30 degrees. And if we look that up on the chart on the previous slide, we'll see that the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. All right, next let's find 2 times g of theta if theta is again equal to 60 degrees. So we're considering 2 times g of theta. If we plug 60 degrees in for theta, that's 2 times g of 60 degrees. So that gives us 2 times the cosine of 60 degrees. From our previous table, cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half, so we have 2 times 1 half. And if we simplify that, that'll give us 1. So let's look at another example. This time we want to evaluate the following expressions. First, 2 times the sine of 45 degrees plus 4 times the cosine of 30 degrees. We'll start by putting in the values for sine of 45 and cosine of 30 from our chart. So 2 times the square root of 2 over 2, which is sine of 45, plus 4 times the square root of 3 over 2, which is the cosine of 30. If we do the multiplication and simplify for our first term, the 2 the 2's will cancel out, leaving us with the square root of 2. And for the second term, 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then we still have the square root of 3, so that's 2 root 3. So our overall answer is the square root of 2 plus 2 times the square root of 3. Next, we want to simplify 4 plus the tangent squared of pi over 3. So remember, tangent squared means we're going to take that tangent function, tangent of pi over 3, and we're going to square the whole value. If we consider the trig function values of our common angles, we can see that tangent of pi over 3 is just the square root of 3. So we have 4 plus the square root of 3 squared. And the square root of 3 squared is just 3, so we have 4 plus 3, which simplifies to be 7. Alright, next we want to talk about evaluating our trig functions using a calculator. There are a few things to keep in mind when trying to use a calculator to evaluate trig functions. First, you need to make sure that your calculator is in the correct mode. If your problem is in radians, your calculator needs to be in radian mode. If your problem is in degrees, your calculator needs to be in degree mode. Next, you need to know the order of entry that your calculator requires. Some calculators require you to press the trig function button first and then the number that represents the angle. Others require you to put in the angle value first and then push the trig function. And last, remember your calculator only has buttons for sine, cosine, and tangent, so it's important to rewrite all problems in terms of those three functions in order to evaluate the other trig functions. So let's look at a few examples. First, we want to figure out what is the cosine of 14 degrees. 
So as long as our calculator is in degree mode, if we evaluate the cosine of 14 degrees and round to two decimal places, we should get 0 0.97. Next, we want to evaluate the cosecant of 55 degrees. So first, we want to rewrite this in terms of sine, cosine, and tangent. So cosecant, we know, is 1 over sine. So this is going to be 1 divided by the sine of 55 degrees. And if we evaluate that with our calculator, we should get approximately 1.22. Next, we want to deal with the cotangent of pi over 18. So now we're dealing with radians since there is no degree symbol. And that means our calculator needs to be put into radian mode first. Then we'll rewrite the problem in terms of cosines and sines. So cotangent is cosine over sine. So we want to evaluate the cosine of pi over 18 divided by the sine of pi over 18. And if we put that in the calculator and evaluate, we should get approximately 5.67. And finally, we want to evaluate the tangent of 1. Now, even though this may look like a problem that involves degrees, since you don't see pi, this is actually in radians. Um, all degree problems will have the little circle degree symbol to signify that the angle is in degrees. So again, we need to be in radian mode for this problem. And if we evaluate the tangent of 1 in radian mode, we should get approximately 1.58. And so the last thing that we want to talk about in this lecture is how to solve applied problems involving right triangles. So the method that I recommend is first, draw a little picture, sketch out what your problem looks like. Then label all of the quantities that you know and identify what you're looking for. And then create some sort of an equation so that you can solve for your unknown quantities. So let's do a couple of examples. First, a person in a small boat offshore from a vertical cliff known to be 100 feet high takes a sighting of the top of the cliff. The angle of elevation is 25 degrees. Given this information, find out how far offshore is the ship. So we want to start by sketching, making a brief sketch of the problem that we're dealing with. So we have a guy in a boat who's offshore and there's a cliff somewhere off in the distance that he's going to look at the top of. So essentially for our problem, we're looking at this right triangle, the triangle that goes from the guy offshore up to the top of the cliff, and there's a right angle between the cliff and the water. Now let's label what we know. So we're told in the problem that the cliff is 100 feet high. So the length of that side of the triangle is 100. And we're told that the angle of elevation for the sighting is 25 degrees. So this angle between the water and the the line of sight of the guy in the boat is 25 degrees. And the problem wants us to find how far offshore the ship is. So we're trying to look for the distance between the boat and the cliff. So we know the 25 degree angle. We know the side that's opposite that angle. And we're looking for the side that's adjacent to the angle. So we want to set up an equation that will help us solve this. So to set up our equation, we need to determine which trig function deals with opposite and adjacent. And that's going to be the tangent function. So we know that tangent of 25 should equal the side opposite, which was 100, divided by the adjacent side, which is what we're looking for. So we'll call that x. So we have the equation tangent of 25 degrees equals 100 over x. And now we just need to solve for x. So we'll multiply both sides of the equation by x, giving us x times the tangent of 25 degrees equals 100. To get x by itself, we'll divide both sides by the tangent of 25 degrees. So x equals 100 divided by the tangent of 25 degrees. And we can use our calculator to evaluate that. So 100 divided by the tangent of 25 degrees should give us approximately 214.45 feet. So the boat is 214.45 feet offshore. So let's try one last example. A guy wire 80 feet long is attached to the top of a radio tower making an angle of 65 degrees with the ground. Given this information, can you find out how tall is the tower? So I'd like for you to take a few minutes and see if you can set this problem up and solve it. If you finish or get stuck, feel free to follow along with me by continuing the lecture. So the first thing that we want to do is draw a sketch of what the problem is dealing with. So we have this radio tower that's secured to the ground by a guy wire. And essentially what we're looking at is this triangle that's formed by the radio tower, the guy wire, and the ground. So now we want to start filling in what we know. 
So we know that the length of the guy wire is 80 feet, so the hypotenuse of this triangle is 80. We know that the angle that the guy wire makes with the ground is 65 degrees. And the problem is asking us for the height of the tower, so we're looking for the side that's opposite the 65 degree angle. So this time we have the opposite side and the hypotenuse, so we need to set up a trig function, an equation that deals with the trig function that deals with opposite and hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse is going to lead us to the sine function. So sine of 65 degrees equals the unknown quantity x, which is our opposite side, divided by 80, which is our hypotenuse. And now we can solve this for x. We multiply both sides by 80 to give us 80 times the sine of 65 degrees equals x. And now that we have x by itself, we can plug this into the calculator to evaluate. When we plug it into the calculator, we'll see that 80 times the sine of 65 degrees is approximately 72.5 feet.